Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I thought I'd tell you a story. It's like a nightmare that I had uh, three or four days ago in the middle of the night. And um, it was a very vivid nightmare that woke me up. And I don't really know the meaning of it, the significance of it. I, I remember that it happened during two days of heavy rains here in Los, there in Los Angeles. And uh, there were days when the streets were flooding up above the curbs because there's not, the, not a lot of rain in Los Angeles and they don't plan the grade of the streets according to the water flow that happens when there's a storm that continues um, with water all day long. And that, that happens once or twice a year that the streets get flooded up. And so, in the middle of the night, while it was raining, there would have been a different sound in the air, a sound on the roof, a sound outside where the rain was hitting the ground and so forth. And I wonder if that might have had something to do with this, this nightmare that I had that night and some other nightmares that have happened since then. Anyway, it went like this. There was a dreamscape, a city dreamscape, maybe in Pasadena. Um, it seemed like Pasadena, but no real place there, you know, with high freeways going through over valleys that were included residential districts. And it was easy to get lost on these high elevated freeways and through there. And there was a college campus there. It might have been a place like Caltech or maybe some other um, university in the Pasadena area. I, I've never actually, I think I've only been to Caltech once. I don't remember any place like that. It was just a feeling, a place like that, I think. And um, there was a person there who was living with a woman uh, he was an antisocial personality, and he uh, he would go out at night and stalk the the people there in in the um, on the college campus, what they call the army of the night kind of guy, um, and and so I it was like I dropped or dipped into his consciousness, got a gander of his life there, you know, and and then stepped back out. So that was the first. And then I woke with a dream of being in a very small restroom on the East Coast, it seemed like, or maybe Europe, um, a woman's restroom. And I was, um, I was homeless. It was a, a young woman, I think. Or I'm not sure. Uh, it was a woman, though. And she was in this very small restroom in a park trying to find a way to get a few minutes of rest and at the same time protect herself from any men that might enter there and try and uh, exert violence over her during the, it was nighttime. And, but I remember she had a very uh, positive attitude. She said she was sure that someone would come in and offer to take her home and take care of her and like that a man. And so full of concern over that, then I segued into another dream, even a worse dream. <laughs> and it went, um, it was as if this young woman were walking through a series of streets, um, kind of complicated streets, like sometimes in Europe and in, on the East Coast there are streets that just don't make much sense. They're not laid out uh, in an orderly fashion. They frequently are out here in California, but rather they simply sprang up, you know, as with time here and there uh, centuries ago when the nation was first founded. Or in Europe, it's probably the same way sometimes. So there would be streets that would meld together and not make much sense in ways of not getting from one street to the other and so forth. And um, 
that same person or a, another young homeless woman was walking along those streets and knew them very well and had stayed in a certain place and was, by the water, I think, by some water and was uh, then back in this in this urban area and was walking along and all of a sudden the road changed and, and the person changed into um, the, the, it was like the California or Arizona countryside. Uh, um, it was it was mostly barren and and mountainous, and I saw um, I saw first a kind of a, a strange creature by the side of the dirt road. It was um, it was kind of reddish, rusty, orangish, reddish brown color. And it looked like a kind of a fat-bodied snake, about um, one and one half, two feet long. And yet, I, then when I looked twice, I saw that it had tiny legs on it, like a, like a lizard might. But it didn't look very functional, but it had legs. And it was right beside a, a tiny bush by the road. And I went for my camcorder, then it was me there. I went for my camcorder to record it, and then I looked back and it was gone. So first there was that. I don't know, was it uh, a red gila? Was it a, I just don't know, orange, the orange snake? And, and then I saw a man's leg. I saw two, like... They were like coyote holes, you know. I don't know if you know about the coyote holes are not very big. They're they're like everywhere out here, and they're they're dug into the dirt and they're only about six inches wide, maybe four inches wide, and yet they can get down in there. And uh, but however, this was much bigger. It was like a foot and a half wide, and a hole that went directly down into the earth uh, by the side of the road uh, over a cliff not a cliff, but a decline where the dirt went down pretty fast. And, and about six feet lower, ten feet lower, there was another hole in the dirt that went down in the dirt. And past that, the, the earth continued to like tumble and cascade down into a valley that overlooked a, a high mountain in the distance. So what I saw was that uh, the rains had come down down, coursing down the road, and they had not damaged the surface of the dirt road. But when they got to that that hole there at the top, uh, beside the road, they had filled it up with mud. And I saw a man standing with like sorrow in his heart, um, not his face, but his foot, like with um, hiking a running shoe on, the kind with the tread on it, stamping down into the. Uh, firm but damp earth, the um, imprint of his shoe that I could see where when he removed it, where the sole of the shoe had been. You know how sometimes you can see tracks of hikers in the in the mountains when you walk or on the beach, like that. And and the feeling that I got was that maybe sixteen people lay buried in that place. That there was an underground chamber there that had filled with water. And the mud had come down and prevented them from getting out. It, the chamber had collapsed. There were uh, some women and children there and men there. And they had all died during the rains. And this person who knew about their, um, their place, their, their home in the earth, had stopped by and found and heard them, he said. He had heard them crying out from deep in the earth and that saying that the water had slowly come up and that they could not get away and then he said their cries stopped and that was the end of that terrible sequence of dreams uh, which I'm remembering still and attempting to to figure out you know it, um, so I, I, I'm sorry I sometimes the prophet doesn't have the answer I guess uh, but I pray for all those who live in the mountains, who have homes that burrowed into the earth, all over California, that they may be safe, that they have enough to eat, and that they should hap have happy and fulfilled lives, just as 
might all, all beings everywhere. And so I pray that this may be so and that this for me might be a heads up that much needs to be done all over the world for the disadvantaged people of earth. God bless you all and keep you safe and give you all that you need for a happy and fulfilled life on earth.